Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes and I'm here today with a handover of the Auto Trail Tracker RB, which is a 2021 model. So starting with walk around on the driver's side of the vehicle first, the first point you get to is your hookup points. So you've got your hookup flap here, lift your flap up, lift the collar up, and then slide on. Always hook the vehicle up first, then the main sight, and do it in reverse when unhooking, as I wouldn't want you to walk around with the live lead in the rain. And underneath, you've got your wastewater outlet. So it's very important in the winter you drain this off, but normally on the way out of a site, once you've used the vehicle, you pull over the service pitch for motorhomes, pull the lever, and it will drain off any wastewater. So this is anything that you've put down a plug hole in the shower, the hand basin, or the sink in the kitchen. Got some storage here. So that opens. Massive. In there so you can keep your little bits and pieces in there. Hookah blades, leveling ramps, boots, wellies, whatever you want in there. And then next week you have your fresh water intake. So what I would go and do is buy a hose pipe with some, a few connection ends as it's mainly just a brass tap on site. Put your hose pipe in there until it overflows or until you're happy there's enough water on board. Feeling that you do have a connection for a pump there so you can get your wheel, <laughs> wheel submersible pump which Michael's got in his hand here so you put your Connection into the top, and then you'll need to turn it off on the main control panel. In there, and then the other end goes into here, and then you can drop the pump into a bucket or an aqua roll, and it will suck the water out the container into the main tank on the vehicle. You won't really need to use this unless you want to top your water up when you're on a site, or if you're wild camping and you want to top the water up. Or if you can't get to a hose pipe. Coming further back, you've got your cold water fed shower, external shower, so just points in there. And it's basically just like connecting the hose pipe with the hose pipe end. So on the other end of the hose is the trigger. As long as the pump's on, you'll be able to hose the dog off, wash the boots, the bikes. <laughs> and then, at the back, underneath the back wheel, you've got your fresh water. So this is your fresh water drain off, so you would pull this, and there's all your fresh water coming out. So if you've taken on contaminated water, you are draining the vehicle down for the winter, in the winterized process, or you're simply just not using the vehicle for a while, you would let it out by pulling the handle, and that'll drain off all the fresh water that you've put in via the first wheel flap with the key on there. Coming further back, so you've got on the back panel, you've got your high level brake light, your reverse camera, and then you've got your bars here, your Thule bars, where the bike rack can go if you want one fitted in the future. This is where the back panel's been strengthened, so there's one there, and there's one just behind the number plate for the bike rack. And then coming round to the passenger side, You've got your storage there underneath the bed and your boilers in here. But you do have a socket there, so there's a socket underneath the bed which you can use if you wanted power in the awning. As your boiler's behind here, when operating on gas, this is your vent for your fumes off your boiler. And then coming further down, you put your cassette loo. So to operate the cassette loo, first of all, make sure that the blade on the bottom bowl of the toilet is closed. Then you'll be able to lift this up and slide it out. If it doesn't come out, you know that the blade is open. Then you've got some wheels so you can drag it to your site to empty, which is normally behind 
or beside the shower and toilet block to empty the cassette. And then what you do is you take the grey cap off, press the button at the back, it just allows air in, gives it a consistent flow and you tip it out. This is just what I have tested it with. You tip all that out. Once you've disposed of your waste, there's normally a tap and you put some water in via the spout, put the lid back on the cap, give it a rinse and tip out. And then if you're using the liquid form of chemical, this is a 120 mil cap. So you put your green or your blue chemical into there. And then it's good to go back to the vehicle. If you're using the tablets, put the cassette in bone dry after you give it a rinse. Put it in, go into your washroom, open the blade, press the flush and pump about a pint of fresh water into the cassette and then follow buy a tablet which is either the blue or the green it's up to you ask which ask your site which is best or which they prefer you to use more sites is normally now the green instead of the blue pop it through in the cellophane and that'll break up into the liquid then you're good to use the cassette until it's ready to be changed again here you have your external gas point so as you can see there's a spigot on a cable tie so if you just chop that off Get some gas hosing and some Jubilee clips, connect them all together onto the end of there. That pops in just underneath and then you can turn this on and off and it'll operate from the main gas bottle on board. And then you can connect that to your Kadak, uh, your external oren heater, your barbecue, and it'll use the bottle on board instead of carrying a spare with you. You've got your oren light, your fridge vents, the awning is an option on this vehicle so it doesn't come standard with an awning from the factory this customer has put an awning on via us so if you are buying a Tracker RB you will not get an awning with it unless you opt for one it's part of the deal LPG so liquid petroleum gas so this is your gas locker So in here you can fit two six kilogram bottles. Once they're on board, if you just tie them in with the straps behind, to connect the pigtail to the bottle, it's a left hand thread, hand tighten, and then just nip it up with your hands. No need for a spanner on this, it's just all done by your hand. So opposite threads with being gas left hand, tighten, that's it. Turn on and off from the top of the bottle. Always make sure you turn the bottle off before you start travelling, just for safety, in case you were involved in any collisions. If the gas is off, it's far safer in the accident. And then make sure, like I've said, it's strapped in. And then you've got your crash valve here. So, always make sure that's pushed in. If it does pop out, you just need to reset it like it says there by pushing it back in. And you've got this section here which just allows to get the bottles in and out more easily. The passenger, the passenger door you've got your... And the passenger door is where you'll find your diesel filler which opens with the main ignition key. So use the key, open it up and you've got a lockable diesel cap and then you would just fill with diesel fuel. And below, because it's a new Euro 6D compliant engine, it's got the AdBlue solution so that's a 19 litre tank You'll get a warning when it needs add blue as you'll get a light that comes between the fuel gauge and the temperature gauge. Simply top it up as soon as this light does appear. Because this is telling you you've got about a thousand miles left. If you do allow it to go too low, what will happen is the vehicle will go into limp mode which restricts the engine at 50 mile an hour max speed. Just to protect the engine. So simply pulling to a service station, you can buy the add blue on the pumps. Pop it in there or you can buy it in the drums and just top it up as soon as possible. Otherwise, if it does go to limp mode, you will have to get it to a garage or call for some help. And to avoid this, just make sure your AdBlue is always topped up. Put your tyre pressures on the slam panel of the passenger door. So 5.5 bar, which is 79.5 psi all round. So front, back on both axles. Engine battery is underneath this compartment here. And then underneath the seat is where you'll find a jack and a brace and a torn eye. So that's your toolkit. 
and your bonnet release so on the side of the passenger dashboard. So if we have a quick look underneath the bonnet. Underneath the bonnet, you've got all your fluids to the left. So your screen wash, which is the main one you're gonna need. Then lifts, lifts off and you've got your power steering fluid next to it and your radiator coolant. Your brake fluid reservoir, oil dipstick and filler. Paint code is 611 for the Grigio Aluminium. You've got an earth there for giving or receiving a jump start. And then just behind the passenger headlight, if you put your key in here, just lift this clip up. This is where the positive terminal is. Weight plate, so 3650, so 3650 kilograms gross vehicle weight. If you were to put a tow bar on a tow with this, you can tow up to 4.9 ton. So once inside the vehicle, this is your main 12 volt control panel. So it's a touchscreen panel, and if you're hooked up, you'll get this indication here that you're on mains hookup, which is 240 volt. So you'll be, be able to use all domestic items, such as a mains powered kettle. If not, you will just have 12 volt on board. So all your 12 volt appliances work and things like your hot plate and microwave won't work unless you're hooked up. So you've got your master switch here, which turns the vehicle on and off, either 12 volt or 240 volt. And then across from it, you do have your interior lights, which are all then individually switched. But this is the master switch on this side that you've got to have on for those switches to work. Underneath, you've got your pump. So you've got to have the pump on to pressurize the water through the pipes. Otherwise, you'll just get whatever's left in the pipe work. And underneath the light switch, you've got your own light switch, which is the one outside. And then underneath that, you've got the dimmer, so you can dim the light in the lounge. Underneath the pump, you've got your fresh water level, so you can see 100% of fresh, zero waste. And then underneath that, you can see your battery level, so you can see that you've got 14.3 volts in your leisure battery, 12.4 in your vehicle. Your active battery current, which always wants to be a leisure, which is the middle bar there. So there's 0 0.8 amps coming off the leisure battery at the moment. And then you've got the mains current coming in. So you've got 10 amps coming in. And you've got 0 0.1 amp on the solar panel coming in. But when hooked up, the solar panel does go to sleep as the vehicle on the hookup takes priority as it's a bigger charge. Going to the spanners setting in the bottom, which is your setting. You want your active battery to be on leisure all the time, as this is the battery that runs the motorhome. You don't want the vehicle battery to be running the motorhome, as there is a chance you can flatten it. And then underneath you've got solar battery select. You can have done smart, and what smart does is it monitors both batteries. Whichever, whichever battery does get too low, it will switch it over. So at the moment there, it's switched back over to vehicle battery and it's going to charge your vehicle battery. On this side you've got your tank fill. So like I was saying, when Michael put the pump on, if you are filling with a pump, you turn this on and that will make the pump work. Turn it on and off. And then you've got tank heaters, which if it's going to freeze overnight, if you put your tank heaters on, it'll stop the water from freezing by putting current through the water which will stop it from potentially freezing. Going further along you've got your light setting, your dimmer light setting, your screen time and your dating time. And then press the house and go back to the main control panel. Come to this side you've got your heating and hot water panel via your Truma digital control panel so there's loads of videos on this if you wanted to go a bit more in depth true might do their own videos but i'll keep it nice and simple so you turn on and off by pressing and holding it's on standby there so you just press enter to enter into the menu in the top left hand corner you've got a motorhome with a thermometer in this is how hot you want the motorhome on the heating so you've got all the way to 30 or all the way to off once you're happy so we'll say for this 30 you just press enter, and that saved the heat in there at 30 degrees. 
And then next week you've got a thermometer and some water. This is how hot you want your water. So you've always got to make sure that you've got water in the boiler and that the boiler is closed before you put the hot water on, which normally it is. The only time it's going to be open is in the winter when you're winterizing the vehicle. Otherwise it is like putting a kettle on with no water in. It's going to burn the element out. So you've got off, you've got eco, which is heating the water at 40 degrees. You've got hot, which is heating the water at 60 degrees. And you've got boost, which will turn off the heating and prioritize the water. So for this, we'll just say hot, which will heat the water at 60 degrees. Moving on, you've got which energy source. So you've got gas on its own. If you're a wild campman and you weren't hooked up, that's the only source you've got available. So that would be the source you'd be heating the vehicle or the water off. You've got mix one, which is one kilowatt of electric and gas together. You've got mix two, which is two kilowatts of electric and gas together. So this is double the sources. So that if you're in desperate need of water or heating, put on that. Especially in the winter, it'll take less time to heat the water or the vehicle. And then you do have electric on one, which is electric on one kilowatt, depending on what amperage the site gives you. And electric on two, which is two kilowatts of electric. So normally you can use electric on two on more sites throughout the UK, depending on which other appliances you're running in the vehicle. Otherwise you could trip it out, so you may have to turn to electric on one. But normally you can use electric on two. Next week you've got your fan in the top right, so you can have it on eco or high. This is just a 12 volt assisted fan. Uh, eco is a little bit quieter for when you are potentially going to have it on when you're sleeping. And high, it'll make the fans run a little bit louder to surface the heat around the vehicle. You've got a timer in the bottom left hand corner so you can time the heat to come on and off just the once though. Main display panel time, so that's the time that it currently is. And then you do have settings. So if you get a worn triangle in the middle, what you can do is you can go down to reset, click on it, It'll say preset, click again, and what it's doing is it's wiping this control panel and it's going to start it again, so you'll have to put everything from the start, so the, the heating, the hot water, the fan, and the energy source, so you'll have to set it up all again, and then to turn off, you just press and hold, and it'll go off. At the back of the van, you've got your transverse island bed, so you've got storage, Drawers underneath this side, and then you do have storage underneath and a wardrobe on either side. Boom arm table which goes in the front. All your lights there. Two 12 volt USB points, and then all your little individual reading lights. Storage up above, and then a slimmer wardrobe on the left hand side with some drawers. You can lift the bed up and gain access to the storage underneath. That is the same storage you can gain access from outside. Storage cupboard in here. In there and in here. If you want to mount a telly in the bedroom, you can mount it here. You've got USB, TV aerial, and a power point on 240 volt. So now in the kitchen, you've got your kitchen sink. That's just showing that your water pump's working and your water's getting to temperature there. Coming through nice and warm. And then you do have on the hob, you've got one electric hot plate at the back, which is operated by this switch here. And then you've got three gas. So to operate your gas, put two there, and one at the back. Allow everything to cool down on gas before you put the cooker hood down, and same with electric, as you don't want the heat to smash the cooker hood. And then below, You've got your grill, so you may want to take your grill pan and oven shelf out when travelling or wrap them up. And then below that you do have your oven. Like so. 
Underneath you've got this compartment here which has got your plug for your hob which is the electric hob plate. You've got your water pump at the back and you've got some storage. You do have this added worktop so if you push it in in the corners it'll pop out then you can pop that out and you've got space for when you're cooking. Cut the drawer hidden behind it and then underneath there you do have some storage space. Pull the two arms off the worktop and that'll fold back down. Plate rack, cup rack in there. Microwave which is 800 watt which is a mains household microwave. Plugs in there should you have to isolate it. And then across from where you do have your fridge. So you've got a large slimline fridge there with freezer compartment. And your table is just in here, next to the fridge. And then to operate the fridge, so you turn on and off here, just by pressing and holding. Then if you press the square button, it'll tell you what source you're on. So it says A, which stands for automatic energy selection, and there's a picture of a plug. So automatic energy selection, what that does is, it'll pick out the best source available. So at the moment we're on hook up, but we have gas on board. So if I was to go out and unhook the vehicle, it would switch over to gas and self-ignite. If I was then to start the engine, it would go over the battery setting, which is a feed from the engine alternator, which is just designed to keep the temperature of the fridge that it was previously at. So chill it beforehand. So you'd use this if you're moving from home to a site, if you've pre-chilled the fridge on hookup at home, or you're moving from site to site. If you did want to manually change it over, you just press and hold the square button, wait until it starts to flash, and then use the arrows. So you've got hook up on its own, battery on its own, which will only work when the engine's running, and then gas on its own. And then this is the temperature, so you can go up and down with the temperature, and then press to light. Please note with the automatic energy selection, when you turn the engine off and you're not hooked up and you're wanting to light it on gas, it does wait 20 minutes before lighting on gas. This is just a safety feature, as if you were to pull into a petrol station and you've left your gas open, it'll not be finding 240 volt, it'll not be finding 12 volt because you'll have knocked the engine off, but it will find gas. And that's the last thing you want to start taking over on on gas. Above you've got your TV booster, so your TV booster's there, so you can use the wheel here to turn the aerial up or down on the amplifier should you be struggling to get a signal, but it is just a fixed flat aerial on the roof. So your, your washroom door acts as your bedroom door. To the right hand side you've got your shower, so you've got your turnbuckle to turn your shower screens back and a hanging reel. So if you've been caught, which is good for wet towels, wet coats, or if you aren't using your shower, what a lot of people do is use it as an added wardrobe. And then when winterizing, if you remember to take your shower head off your hose, allow your hose to lie in the tray, and leave all the mixer taps in the open position throughout the van. So you do open the kitchen tap, the hand basin tap, and the shower tap. To the left hand side, you've got your washroom, so you've got your toilet, so you've got storage in there with straps for your toilet rays. Your light is this one here, the washroom. And then to operate your toilet, make sure the pump's on. Press the button, you've got your fresh water flush. So always flush the toilet first, which keeps the seal nice and secure and not brittle. So it keeps it in a working order. And then what you need to do is slide this to the right, which opens the blade and allows everything in the cassette. Flush after use and then slide to the left to isolate the blade. It shuts it and then you'll be able to get the cassette out should it be full, which it will come on here when it does. Sink plug is just a push pull plug and that's just showing that you're Water pumps working in the bathroom as well, and you've got some toiletry space underneath. Toilet roll holder, and then your skylight, you would just pull down 
and open. And this skylight is the same design as that big one over the bed, so just pull and always make sure that the plastic lugs are on the arms there and then just give it a, a little test that it's shut. Always make sure it's shut before you travel and if it's wind stronger than 50 mile an hour, shut them as you don't want them to break and be ripped off the vehicle. Fly screen and a blackout blind. So this shows the lounge in the made up bed position. So you've got the backrest from there and the base pulled forward. This just slides out and then there's a leg that just folds down underneath there for added support. And then in this space here, you use the table that would be found in here. So you remove this section, which is how the U-shaped, or should I say the L-shaped lounge is, the half dinette. And you put your table in there, so your table just pushes in through the two bits of wood there, through the groove, and onto the runner there. And then you would use the base cushion and the backrest in there to create the bed. And then above you've got the drop down bed, so you turn the key to the horizontal position, press the button. You will have to remove your head rests off here. And then what you can do is press, a, press and hold the button, don't click click, just press and hold. That's as far as the bed comes down. Ladder that's on the bed goes onto here and then you can just take this off here which just stops the net from getting caught in the motor. And there's a light there on the toggle switch and nets that clip to the ceiling if you're putting children up on the drop down bed. Underneath the two rear traveling seats, if you lift this up, you'll find the location for your leisure battery. So it's underneath this black compartment here and there is a battery fuse there. So there's two 20 amp battery fuses there and that's where you'll find the location of your 100 amp hour banger leisure battery. Underneath the smaller side face and bench seat, this is your gas locker. This is your EC700 unit. So you've got a system shutdown button here which isolates the leisure battery, should you want to in the winter. And then here you have your 12 volt fuses which are listed here, what they do. So do carry some spare ones and then you can just replenish the fuse. And then on this side, you've got your RCD and MCBs. So if you trip the vehicle out, try here before you try main sight. And you've got your charger and heating and hot water on 240. So just leave them with the lights on and just forget about them. They'll only work when the 240 is in, but obviously your heating and hot water does work off gas as well. But this is just the element side of it on 240. And then in the cupboard underneath the bed, you've got your two relays for your drop down bed and you do have your 15 amp resettable fuse. So there's a little nib on there. So if the bed just won't go up, what you've got to do is you've just got to press the nib in, which will reset the fuse on the motor and the bed will start working. Put your build number here, which is unique to each vehicle. So if you ever need parts, quote that number. In the garage area, just underneath this little compartment underneath the bed, which is your storage garage, you've got this yellow toggle tap here. So if you notice it's in the horizontal position, what you need to do is you need to put it in the vertical position when not using the van in the winter. Otherwise the water can freeze in the boiler which holds 10 litres of water at any one time. It's very important that you don't allow the water to freeze because it isn't covered under warranty and it is very expensive to replace the boiler. So what you've got to do is if you just lift it up like so, you'll see the water draining out underneath the vehicle. Leave it stood up in the time you've got the vehicle in storage or stood up and not being used. Then open all the taps throughout the vehicle. Once you move your shower head and lie with the hose down, open all the taps which stops any airlock and any water that's in the pipes to just drain out. Open the fresh and the waste on the other side of the vehicle and that will stop any water from freezing in the plastic tanks and pipework throughout the motorhome. When you come to reuse it, you'd lie the tap down, you'd shut the waste in the fresh, shut all the taps through in the, throughout the vehicle, fill it up with water, go to the cold side of the tap first with the pump on, you'll get automatic cold water because the water pump is pulling it direct from the tank underneath the vehicle. Go to the hot side, it'll cough, sprutter, make all sorts of noises and what that's doing is, it's drawing it from the 
fresh water tank into the 10 litre boiler behind here and then it's pressurizing it through the taps but in order to do that it's pushing out all the air first and then filling with 10 litres of water so it will cough spritter make all sorts of noises give it three or four minutes and then you'll get pressurized water on one tap you do them all and the system is primed for the season and it's ready to use but remember please winterize your vehicle because it's a very costly mistake if you forget an auto trail won't cover it under their warranty as it's your responsibility to drain down the vehicle and winterize it properly there's other videos on our channel about winterizing so you can have it you can check that out if you do forget so now in the cab to the right of the driver you do have your handbrake and then on the doors you have your electric window adjustment and electric mirror adjustment so this joystick controls both top and bottom mirror top's your big mirror bottom's your blind spot so you do have two adjustments on both sides of the wing mirrors on the doors to black them out on an evening you have remus car blinds fitted so if you pinch and you slide along you can black the passenger and driver's door out and then to do the windscreen you just pinch slide along and they will just meet on a magnetic strip there you've got your headlight adjustment and your rear fog lights you've got your wiper stalk which has your trip computer on the end so it'll tell you average and instant consumption your miles per gallon your range your distance traveled and your miles covered all through the screen in the middle steering wheel controls which will work when the engine's running headlights and indicators and then you do have at the bottom you have up for cruise control push up to set push up to accelerate pull down to slow down cancel with a foot brake or cancel on the end of the stalk and then you can press resume to the last speed it was set at before the engine was turned off at the bottom you've got speed limiter so push up slowly goes up in ones push and hold it goes up in fives this will limit the vehicle to the speed selected but you do have the kick down function so you can floor the accelerator and it will override the cruise control as a, or should i say the speed limiter as a safety feature also when you've got the cruise control on you can still put your foot on the accelerator if you need a little bit of more power and it will increase the speed for that time but then it will slow back down to the cruise control speed set you've got a that's just a step coming in six speed manual gearbox with up lift into reverse which brings on your reverse camera which is just there you can see the bike rack on the back of this model ESR off is anti-slip relief off so it's another word for turning your traction control off you've got your hazards this locks the door including the habitation door so the two cab doors and the hab door you will have to manually lock the lockers with the little key for all the other lockers you've got your heated mirrors there USB for charging purposes only and a 12 volt for charging purposes only glove box here and a heated and cooled glove box by the air conditioning at the top Temperature on the outside ring, fan speed on the in, must be on at least one or more for the aircon to work which is this button here. And then you've got the distribution on the outside ring, so face, feet or screen and whether you're recirculating air or you're bringing fresh air in. To work the accent unit, turn on by pressing and holding, you've got your volume. And then you have your radio which is FM and AM. DAB is obviously your DAB radio, so you click on that. Please wait, it's just run through its cycle. So you can press list and find all your stations. So you've got national stations, D1 national stations, BBC national stations, and then our local stations which are Tiny and Weir. And you can preset six of them to save your favorite DAB stations and you can do the same on your FM should you be struggling to find DAB. Go back to home, you've got Bluetooth, 
something up to your Bluetooth, you want to find Bluetooth on your phone and start searching, and then it'll come up on here with Callum's iPhone or whoever's phone. Click pair, pair on your device, allow your contacts to be saved so it'll download your phone book into the head unit so you can scroll through your contacts on here and press whichever one you want. And then, if you did want to use Bluetooth audio for your music, obviously you've got keypad, contacts, call log, music, you just click on music and then you can stream your music over Bluetooth instead of connecting via a USB. Scrolling along, you've got USB, iPod, and Android link, which will work through the USB, which is in the top glove box. Camera, so you can turn the camera on and have the camera on when going down the road, acting like a rear view camera. Going back to home, if you scroll this way, you've got navigation, so you've got your sat nav. So when that loads, I'll just talk about these buttons here. So you've got home, nav, cam, which is your reverse camera, DAB, ALT, and Bluetooth, which is your phone. So these are just shortcuts which you can use when driving, just so you're not taking your eyes off the road for too long. You can just press it and it'll bring up this, the screen you want to select. So this is just loading your sat nav in there, so just setting it up with it being new. So your GPS chip's in the top, and this is a XF270. So you can update these, so you can just go on the Accent website, updates, find the updates, plug the a USB into your laptop or computer, download it, put it into the USB here and then go to the settings and load an update in should it become glitchy. So that's just a map showing us we're on the A692 at Burnham Fields and Biomoor. So that's just showing where we are now. If you click here, so the three dots in the right hand corner, new route, address. You want to be putting your postcode of town in here, which is the middle one. Press and go to town, set as destination, and then it'll give you an ETA and a time and it'll start where you need to go so middle bar for your postcode or destination should you be going out of the country to france spain you just change the country at the top and then obviously your save locations will save in there once you have started using the sat nav